right, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while since I put out a video, and I want to do a quick one now, and I apologize, I'm at home, I'm not at the shop, so I'm uh, just getting a towel on my desk here at the house. But I wanted to do a quick video about this trigger right here. This is the new, and I say new, it's been out for a few months now, but this is the Timney Glock Alpha Trigger. So uh, this one in specific is made for uh, Gen 3 and Gen 4 Glocks. This is my Glock 17. I'm not sure if it's a Gen 3 or Gen 4. I think it's a Gen 4. Anyway, I bought it this way uh, with, the, with the, uh, the Lone Wolf slide and barrel combination already on it. I absolutely love it. But anyway, this is um, uh, the trigger is the focus here, and this is the Timney Glock Alpha Trigger, and it's a competition trigger. So what it is is a drop-in trigger for a Glock, uh, Gen 3 or Gen 4. They make them also for a Gen 5, but this is a Gen 3, Gen 4. Uh, it's a drop-in trigger that doesn't require a gunsmith, and you can lower the trigger pull on your Glock to three pounds, and it's a very, very, very crisp pull. Now, before we get going, I want to, I want, and what I want to do in this video is to compare uh, this Timney trigger to a standard Glock trigger, and how it is they accomplish this. Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> let's start out right, right? Uh, Glock 17, completely safe, nothing in the chamber, no magazine around, there's no magazine in there, you can see yeah, straight through, right? So it's a nice clear gun. Uh, this is my Glock 19. Uh, it's in a, uh, oh, I was holding it in the wrong place. So it is a Glock 19 that I have just recently installed a Shadow Systems MR918 frame on. So a standard Glock Gen 4 uh, 19 um, slide and barrel. Uh, on a Shadow Systems frame. I really love the frame and maybe at some point I'll do a, a video or review of it uh, when, I, when I have a little more time to, uh, to get some, some rounds down range on it. Uh, but I, I do like it. Alright, so but the, fo the function or the, uh, the reason why we are doing this video, or I'm doing this video, is uh, to, to, um, to inform you of how it is that Timney does what they do with their triggers, which is it's really amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing what they do with the trigger. So, this gun here, Glock 19, is also safe. Nothing in the chamber whatsoever. And also completely empty. You can see straight through, no magazine. So, nice safe guns. Now, I'll start real quick, and this won't take long, of course, but we'll start with the, with the standard Glock trigger. We will uh, remove the slide. Now, let me just explain how a Glock trigger works. So, the cruciform, the trigger bar, safety plunger, uh, safety plunge, uh, plunger depressor. I'm not sure of the the, <laughs> the actual name of that. And then in the slide here, and this lines up this way, right? Okay, this way. Uh, so here is the safety plunger, right here. And that little that little silver piece there gets depressed by this little tab on your Glock trigger when you pull the trigger back and that allows the striker uh, to fall. Now the striker is back here if you can't see it. Let's see if we can get this right here. It's this little tab. Uh, the striker is actually inside of here but this little tab is uh, attached to the striker and has a spring on it. And so how the Glock trigger works is this little tab on in the slide right here. Right, right there that is caught by the very back side of the cruciform and maybe I can use something here to help illustrate that a little better give me a second okay. right. this part right here the back side of that cruciform Okay, the back side of that cruciform, when you go to pull the trigger, it is what grabs, it's already, it grabs onto this, this little tab here on the striker, and then the striker has a spring, and I, let's see if I can let you see it. You can see it move. You see it moves up and down, and that's pretty, it's a good bit of weight there. So when, when you pull the trigger on the Glock, your little safety tab here, depresses the safety plunger which allows the striker to come forward and as that comes back as as this tab is coming back and depressing this plunger uh, your the back of your cruciform is riding a shelf and coming back and pulling on that striker tab now once this cruciform gets back to uh, and there's a little shelf here it's kind of hard to see let me see if I can show you uh, 
there's a little shelf on the back side of this right here to where this side of the cross of the cruciform rides on a shelf and when it comes back far enough as it's pulling that striker back as the cruciform is coming back and pulling that striker this whole thing falls off of the shelf now it's off of the shelf right now and I can show you how that that works if you'll see it's forward now and it's up and if I pull it back you'll see it fall down and you see it go down like that so as that's going backwards that cruciform is going backwards and comes off of that shelf and falls down it's pulling on that striker tab this tab right here okay. so it is moving that striker tab backward and then once that cruciform falls it lets the striker go forward and that's what that sends the round off now the way that uh, you get the, the weight or the pull of your trigger on a standard Glock is dependent upon that cruciform pulling the spring on that striker, pulling that striker back to let it go forward. And uh, there are ways to get around that and things that you can do. Um, and in fact, this, the insides of this, you'll notice they're very shiny. Uh, they're, not, they're not factory. The parts are factory, but they don't come this way. Uh, this is work I do to them. I polish them up and, and, and do a couple of other little things that actually makes the trigger run a little smoother and it lightens it up a little bit. But in order to lighten it up more, you would have to actually change out the connector that we're not going to get into and uh, you would need to change out the spring on your striker inside of here. Right? So you wouldn't want it to be as much as hard to pull back. Now, that's a standard Glock trigger. Now, what's the difference with the Timney? Well, here it is. Again, safe gun. Let's pull this slide. Uh, same thing on the slide here, right? We still have the the, the safety plunger and the the striker, and this spring is probably a little bit lighter uh, than the standard Glock, which which doesn't. I mean, it helps, but it's that. But it's still the same thing. You have you have your <clears throat> the striker tab, uh, the safety plunger. So everything has to work the same there. The difference comes in here. Now, remember what the cruciform looks like on the Glock here and how it works. On the Timney, you see that red inside of there? The little red uh, housing that goes inside of your trigger housing is part of the Timney uh, kit. And that's why they say it's a, a drop-in. You get that red housing and you get a, a new trigger bar as well. Um, now, the way the Timney works, which is really neat. Now, if you can see this piece right here. Okay, you've got a bar that goes across here. This bar sits on that same shelf I was talking about with the cruciform, so it's up high and it will move back and drop. Uh, but the bar that moves backward does not connect to what is actually holding the striker tab. So what's holding the striker tab is this piece here inside of this red housing that has a spring. And you'll see, let's see if we can get it in a, in a direction. It's got this little lip to it right here. And you can see that this, that goes down. You can see it goes down. All right, so how Timney accomplishes this is instead of when you pull the trigger back and having the cruciform come back pulling on the striker tab the striker tab is already set on this shelf right here it's already it's already engaged with this this tab right here so when you and I'll show you this one's already set and ready to go uh, so when you pull the trigger you'll notice that bar go back let's see if I can get it in there close you'll see the bar start to move back and as the bar goes back that tab drops you see it you see it dropping down as the bar goes back alright so instead of when you're pulling the trigger you're having to pull back the striker tab and the striker and the spring that is holding the striker you're not pulling that back anymore your, your tension is all uh, your trigger tension is all set by this little spring in the housing right there oh the light is pretty bad that's your tension so when that <clears throat> when you pull that bar back and it allows that to drop 
see it go down that's what sets your your striker off so this little lip is engaged the bar drops that lip striker sent forward and your round goes off so that's how Timney is I mean and that's completely reworked uh, the entire Glock trigger now that allows us to get around or, or people who own a, a Glock to get around the the the, uh, the the pull that you get on that striker spring and it's really really innovative and um, I haven't had any problems with it some people have have noted and let me put this back together real quick so some people have noted they were having some problems with the safety tab here as far as it resetting back so after you pull it and it's very light if you'll notice let's see if we can get the lighting just right here let me try to get it yeah that's probably the best it's just a little bit of a little bit of take up to a, a very pronounced wall and then like I said about a three pound pull depends this mine's probably a little less than that probably two and a half to three um, but when it gets to here it's just a nice clean break and the reset on this thing is really really phenomenal as well Let's see if I can do it slow enough here to actually be able to see it oh yeah it's, it's really nothing there's the reset and then it's back it's just a nice crisp nice nice very crisp break but after a break people were complaining that sometimes this uh, the, the the trigger was getting stuck and the safety uh, the little safety tab here that goes against the frame wasn't wasn't engaging now I never had that issue but when I first got this I didn't just throw it in exactly like it comes from the factory from Timney I did, did some, I did some polishing work on it and I think that that is the key because if you'll remember inside of here where that that bar is that bar when the striker goes forward that sh the striker kind of, kind of drags against that bar um, and, and that that can cause a little problem with the trigger reset as well but another problem with the tr trigger reset too is that there the way that Timney resets the trigger, so we pull it, and it's been pulled, and we get it ready to reset, it comes forward. Now, if you'll notice on a Glock, all right, let me pull the Timney. Now it's went off, and when you let it go, it comes back again. Right, so it keeps popping back forward. If you'll notice on a Glock, So on the 19, when you pull the trigger, it doesn't come back forward until it resets, right? So, so the reset is what brings the trigger forward and resets it. So when I, when I pull it back, it, it springs forward off the reset. That's not what happens with the Timney. The Timney has a spring, and this is what makes it a little tough to, to install if you get one. Uh, there's a tiny spring that has to, has to be put in um, underneath the, uh, the, uh, the, the locking block. And it's a little tough to get in there, but that little spring that Timmy gives you is what resets the trigger. And so they were claiming that uh, every once in a while it didn't want to, it would get stuck like right there. Mine's never stuck, but like I said, I polished everything before I put it in there, so everything was really nice and smooth, and I greased it up where it needs to be greased. There are only a couple of places to grease the trigger. Don't just go pouring oil inside of your gun, that's terrible for it. Uh, maybe I'll make a, a video about that. Uh, but I've never had a problem with that. I absolutely love this trigger. Now, that's the difference. That's how Timney does what they do. I completely recommend them. It's uh, for the price of it, you can't beat it. $150 a drop-in trigger that lowers your trigger pull from probably five and a half to six pounds, maybe more, down to three or two and a half. Uh, but would I recommend this as a carry gun? Uh, no, especially someone who's not not highly trained. Even if you are highly trained, now why do I say that? Because in in a tense situation, so if you're carrying this gun and you have to use it, you don't want to. You always want to get on the wall. You want to have a good wall to your trigger if you have to pull your gun out. But you don't want to have such a, a light trigger that getting to the wall, you just you automatically. Uh, let me reset it. You automatically you automatically break through the wall in in a high tense situation. You can do that with this with this trigger fairly easy. Um, it's not so easy to do on this on a standard Glock. Right? It's not easy to do at all. Well, actually, mine's a little easier than most, but there is a really really hard wall there. Uh, and this this trigger has been polished too, so this trigger is a little better than most Glocks. It's actually pretty good. Um, 
I haven't put a put a gauge on it, but I bet it's I bet it's below five pounds. But anyway, you want something in a carry situation to where you can get on the wall without breaking through the wall. The Timney, you're going to do that pretty easy. I would recommend this if you're going to going to use going to use your gun as a range gun or in a competition because um, they they don't tell you this, but this trigger, <laughs> this Timney trigger, can be taken down to a whole lot less than two pounds. It can be taken down underneath a pound in a safe fashion, which is amazing. Uh, in a really safe fashion, like all none of the safeties will be defeated. You could take this thing down to less than a pound and drop it from ten foot in the air, and it's not going to go off, uh, which is really really pretty cool. But anyway, I would not carry it. But I do recommend it because it is a great filling trigger. It's like the closest thing you can get to a 1911 trigger in a Glock, which is absolutely amazing. It's groundbreaking stuff. Very tiny reset. Right? Very tiny reset. Such a clean break. Anyway, guys, that's what I have. The Timney Alpha Glock for the Gen 3, Gen 4. I love it. I recommend it but I don't recommend it to carry it. Um, if you're looking for an upgrade to a carry pistol, I recommend you go to Johnny Glock's website and look at his combat series triggers. They are amazing. I don't have one yet. Johnny Glock, if you see this video, uh, if you want to send me one, I would, I would take it. If not, I'm going to uh, uh, purchase one shortly. Uh, but they, they, are, they are really amazing. I have felt them and they are, they are um, they're outstanding. That guy is a trigger guru. Um, a lot of the things that I do to my Glocks, I got directly from Johnny Glocks. If you hadn't checked him out, go check out his videos. Um, he's very, very helpful. And uh, that's all I've got for this time, guys. See you later. One more thing. If you haven't done it yet, subscri subscribe. Subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell notification. It's the only way I'm going to grow. I probably will never make money off this. I didn't do this to make any money because uh, YouTube doesn't like guns. But it would help me out to know that people are... Uh, finding these videos helpful if they subscribe and if they like the videos. Thank you. Goodbye.